Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video. Minus the background noise, there's planes and there's air conditioners going around in my neighborhood right now. But I'm going to show you in this week's video how to build your own live wall out of a cooler. It's a homemade one, minus a kit that I bought at uh, Cabela's. Including the kit and the cooler that I bought at Walmart. It's a 48 car cooler, 12 and a half gallons, that's 30 bucks, 27, 86 I think. Um, and then the kit is 80. It's all, it's worth it to build your own. Because then you know it's going into it, and the fish do stay alive because I've already tested it out. I'm just, I built it ahead of time. I'm going to show you step by step of what I did uh, for helping you build your own. And um, it's just, it's a great thing to do. You could spend two, three hundred bucks buying one pre made. It's worth it just to build your own. Stay tuned and you'll learn about how to build your own life. You can find these at Ace Hardware. That's where I bought them. This is, but you need a center, um, a center guiding uh, drill bit which uh, you can just bolt wrench on there. This is one and one sixteenth inch. This is what you drill uh, the hole in the back for your sub pump. They don't give you the best information which kind of irritates me. Uh, this is one and one, one and seven eighths. This is what drilled the overflows for both for uh, inside the cooler and the outside of the boat. That was um, a little nerve wracking because if you screw up drilling a hole in the side of your boat, um, tow it to the scrap yard because there's nothing you can do to it. Um, but they say it's one and a and one half inch, but that's just the size of what the overflow hose is. So I had to figure it out myself. But you don't have to, because I I showed you. Um, and when you're drilling it, you can see how the teeth are on this. The teeth are facing to the right, my right. If you look at it, you want to drill backwards, so the teeth drag. On it, because as soon as, if you're going right, my right, I'll show you, if you're going right like this, as soon as the teeth grab the aluminum, it's going to just shred it. So, um, so you want to go backwards. For example, if you're drilling in like aluminum like this, instead of going right, go backward. It takes a little longer, but if you have the guide drill bit in there, uh, it'll be just fine. So it doesn't catch the aluminum. It's worth it. Because as soon as you catch the aluminum, the hole can be too big and you'll have to pack more silicone in there and that's another big chance you have for your boat to leak. I used some pretty expensive silicone because I don't want my boat to leak. This is um, Life Seal. It's meant for marine sealing. It's 22 bucks a can, but you're not even going to use a full can. Uh, my dad put a backing plate on the back of his boat, a thick, like half inch one, and he used this for that and his boat isn't leaking. I used it for drilling like the overflow on the side of the boat and then the back sub, the back Johnson pump um, hole, sort of so where the pump pumps water in. I put it there and it dropped its cap. Um, and I haven't had any leaking because the pump is below the water level. The overflow is not. So I mean that leaking, it didn't leak at all. It's not the biggest deal in the world because it's above the water level. It depends on your boat though, wherever you want to put it. I'll show you where I put mine though. Um, so those are the only tools you'll need, I believe. Those are the only tools you'll need for this video. Um, and a drill. You're gonna need an electric one because it's like pretty much the only option you have. Either cordless or uh, wireless battery. They all work. So for the overflow, this is where we drilled the one 70s hole. Um, the overflow goes has the hose where the hose, hose clamps are. Um, and that comes out. I have some excess. They allow you to cut it in the middle of the hose if you have too much. <coughs> I left it on there just in case. And the two hose clamps. I mean, I would use the metal ones that they have on radiators, but I mean, just use the ones that they have with it, I guess. So my boat, it, uh, it goes nice because I have flat pieces going on the side of the boat, so it's a perfect place to mount it. And I goop, I silicone all around there. And as the aerator is constantly running, if you want it to constantly run without draining your battery, uh, the live well will fill up. Well, the live well will fill up to this water line about halfway of the overflow and uh, then the water will continue to pour out. 
as long as you have the live roll on. You know, I didn't have it on for a full day, and I was fishing a tournament. I didn't get a five fish limit, but um, we had four 17 inches in there, and I'll, I'll post a picture on one of the corners of what it looked like with the four fish in there. And as you can easily see, you can have five fish in there, no problem. And this is just a 12 quart cooler. It fits perfectly in the back of the boat. Our boat goes 20 miles an hour with a 25 horse Johnson on the back. And that is with it completely full. So it doesn't affect the weight as much when we have two people in the boat. Um, so this is where the aerator is. If you, they have um, five holes in the bottom that were pre-drilled. And this is your shutoff valve. When it is, um, when it's not parallel with the aerator, it is open. When it is parallel with it, it's closed. Um, it doesn't seem like it should go that way, but that's how it works. And then here's our 16 inch, um, we drilled a 1 and 1 16th inch hole in this side of, uh, uh, cooler. And that's where, um, our hose to our sub pump goes. Um, and there is a, this black piece. This black piece right here, it screws off, it comes off and it, um, and it has movement. Um, and that screws on there, that is the one piece that I, uh, I showed in the unboxing of it. Um, so that screws on there and then you put the hose from the, that goes to your aerator on there. And then you have the hose clamp. And there's two, um, there's two kind of shims that come with it. And it shows you the direction. The flat piece of one shim is supposed to go against the pump on the inside of the boat. And it's supposed to slant up. Um, the slant piece goes on the inside of the stern. When you get to the back part, the slanted piece goes on the back of the stern. Um, slanted. And then the flat piece goes on the nut they have. Uh, I'm gonna have to cut this down on my boat, but they don't allow they don't um, have a a mesh a mesh cap that goes on there that keeps junk out of there. So I would recommend buying one of those. You can pick one up at a marine store for five bucks. So say I have what 115 in this, it's worth it. Pumps it in real nice. Uh, I, I had no problems with it. It was I I like the live a lot. We'll get back in the boat, and I'll show you. That's where I use that good silicone, and no leaking in that part. So I hooked in my um my on and off switch for my sub pump, and it was like, oh, I hooked up the wires, it didn't work. And then I checked the fuse, they didn't have a fuse in there. So I don't know why it didn't have a fuse in there. It should have. I put a 10 amp. If you put any more than a 10 amp, you might blow your pump. And that is not good because then the pump is junk and then you have to go through all that work again and replace it. So they mark the wires. There's a wire that is connected from each blue connector that's connected together. It's brown. And then they have two of these, two of the gray caps. Um, um, one brown wire uh, fastens to the pump only, goes to the pump. And then I'll show you back at the battery. And the black wire, which is the one here, fastens to the negative part of your battery only. And then this part of the battery, um, or the this brown wire, fastens to the positive power only. So that goes to the um, that goes to the positive battery. And then I'll show you back at the battery what it looks like. A little back there. Okay, so there's two uh, wires that are on your um. Sub pump. There's a black one and a brown one. As it says back there, and they don't come with any enough wire connectors. So you have we. I put two crimp connectors on here. I mean, it doesn't come with everything you need, which is kind of frustrating. I'm glad my dad had all the stuff. It didn't come with connectors that went on the um, the battery terminals. But there's a black and a brown wire that are connected to the sub pump. One black wire connects straight to the negative positive on, or the negative um, battery terminal. And the brown one goes back to one of the, the brown wire that's on your sub pump goes back to a wire that's on the power switch of your, um, your aerator power switch. It says 
to bat um to positive pump only. And then you have a brown wire that comes from the um, on and off switch that goes straight to the positive battery terminal. And they don't have connectors as I said. I'll show you what they look like. You can pick them up at a hardware store. Very cheap. Uh, you might have 5 or $6 in extra stuff. So about $110. They're $120. It's worth it. Um, I mean, you can always buy a cheaper cooler if you want. But this is the cheapest one I saw. And you don't need really any more than a... 12 gallon cooler, maybe a 15 at most. It all depends on your bolt size, but that it didn't get. It didn't come with these connectors, so my dad had some laying around in our electrician bucket, so we just filled it with those. Um, and it works really good. I'll show you. I'll turn the pump on. It's kind of um. So, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when water intakes on the pump. So, I'm going to hook up the water to, um, to the pump. I'm going to turn it on quick and try to, try to get to it. And you can see it going in there really good. I don't know if you can hear me very well. But it really oxygenates the water well. You can also adjust the angle of the aerator. You can break the water up quick. It's kind of horizontal. So it easily fills up the, the aerator. And when you want to dump it out, I'll show you. All you have to do is angle up. Angle up the thing, just tip it backwards. And just turn it back, it's really simple. I mean, I... I'm a small little guy, so it wasn't hard for me to lift it up when it was completely full. So it's a great cooler, great idea. Thanks for watching this week's video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making the live well. It works great. Affordable price. I mean, $120, you can't pass that up. If you look at other competitors' ones, they're not going to be as thick. They're really thin. Not that the insulation matters enough because you're going to be filtering the water out. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Just make sure to subscribe, like this video. If you have any uh, comments or questions, make sure to um, put them in the comment box below. Or if you want to direct message me any questions, I'll also link everything that you've seen in this video where you can purchase it. Um, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.